know you're welcome here. Bring all your joys and your sadnesses, bring your dreams as well as your fears, and here find peace and purpose and the joy that comes from being held in the arms of the Lord who makes us whole. Let's make the space to be still. Try, try to set to one side all that might distract you from being with the one who deserves all our attention. Bearing in mind, of course, that each of us is the focus of his attention. Hallelujah. So come, Lord Jesus, and push your way in through all the busyness and plans that we lose ourselves in. Push your way in through all that crowds you out of our thoughts and help us to let you calm us and settle us. And in the quiet, making room for you, help us to be honest and to face our own shortcomings. And in that honesty, open us to your compassionate concern, which is so ready to forgive and to set us off again on life's journey. Lord Jesus, we are glad that all that weighs us down and all that draws us away from you you can carry for us and we're glad that you wait to turn us around so that we can see the love you have for us in your eyes let this moment be the fresh start with you that each one of us needs a new beginning in your name and to your glory help us to walk where you walk and to do as you would do open our hearts to love as you love and all of these things we ask in your name, Lord Jesus, as in your words, we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus went back across to the other side of the lake. There, at the lakeside, a large crowd gathered around him. Jairus, an official of the local synagogue, arrived, and when he saw Jesus, he threw himself down at his feet and begged him earnestly, My little daughter is very sick. Please come and place your hands on her so that she will get well and live. Then Jesus started off with him. So many people were going along with Jesus that they were crowding him from every side. There was a woman who had suffered terribly from severe bleeding for 12 years, even though she had been treated by many doctors. She had spent all her money, but instead of getting better, she got worse all the time. She had heard about Jesus, so she came in the crowd behind him, saying to herself, If I just touch his clothes, I will get well. She touched his cloak and her bleeding stopped at once and she had the feeling inside herself that she was healed of her trouble. At once Jesus knew that power had gone out of him so he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, 
You see how many people are crowding you? Why do you ask who touched you? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. The woman realised what had happened to her, so she came, trembling with fear, knelt at his feet and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, My daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your trouble. While Jesus was saying this, some messengers came from Jairus' house and told him, Your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? Jesus paid no attention to what they said, but told him, Don't be afraid, only believe. And he did not let anyone else go with them except Peter and James and his brother John. They arrived at Jairus' house where Jesus saw the confusion and heard all the loud crying and wailing. He went in and said to them, Why all this confusion? Why are you crying? The child is not dead. She's only sleeping. He started to make fun of them, so he put them all out took the child's father and mother and his three disciples and went into the room where the child was laying. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talatha kum, which means, little girl, I tell you to get up. She got up at once and started walking around. She was 12 years old. When this happened, they were completely amazed. But Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone. And he said, give her something to eat. Wow, that was a long reading. <laughs> but it's got two brilliant stories in it, hasn't it? And both of those stories are about healing. Only they come at things from two very different angles. I noticed that. The first story, though, is a bit like a football match. How's that? Well, it's a story of two halves. Oh. Sorry. But it begins when Jesus gets off the boat and is met by a temple official. Then its flow is interrupted. Wasn't it just? I mean, the first story began with that man Jairus pushing his way through the crowd to reach Jesus. He pleaded with Jesus to come and see his very sick daughter. And Jesus is happy to oblige. And then the two men set off for Jairus' house to have a look at the wee girl. So far, so good. Only... Very quickly, a crowd gathers around them and surrounds the two of them. Which slows their journey down. In fact, more than that, it stalls that journey completely. Jairus must have been beside himself. Aye. I mean, all he wanted to do was to get Jesus to his wee girl as fast as he possibly could. And the crowds, the crowds were stopping that happening. Poor Jairus must have felt his blood pressure rising. He knew time was not on their side. Would they make it back in time? The thing is, the people in the crowd, they too had heard about Jesus, just as Jairus, Jairus had, and they too were looking for Jesus to help them. Yep. There were lots of people there who were sick or troubled in the crowd that day, and every bit as desperate as Jairus for Jesus to heal them. Which is where the second story comes in, doesn't it? It does. But meanwhile, Jairus must have been about to tear his hair out. And it just gets worse for the poor man, because then Jesus suddenly stops to ask a question that even his own disciples find it hard to believe he should ask. I know. With that huge great crowd all pressing in on him, Jesus stops and says, Who touched me? And his friends go, Eh? Are you serious? But Jesus had felt something, hadn't he? And so had the one woman hidden away in the midst of the crowd. She touched Jesus' cloak and suddenly she felt, well, I don't know, she felt the best she'd done in years. And when Jesus asked, who touched me? She knew immediately that Jesus was looking for her. And it unnerved her. It scared her. Would he tell her off? Did she step forward though? She did step forward and knelt at Jesus' feet, telling him everything. How unwell she'd been for the last 12 years, how ostracised she'd felt, cut off even from her faith community. She told Jesus about all those she'd turned to for help and how poor she was now as a result. And Jesus' heart melted. The suffering 
the loneliness, the physical and spiritual and emotional cost of what this woman had gone through was met with utter compassion. My daughter, Jesus said softly, looking her in the eye, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Beautiful. I love the way Jesus notices people, their pain and their sorrow and their grief, their loneliness and their despair. No one is invisible to him. But as all of this is unfolding, Jairus has to have been like a cat in hot bricks. Why had Jesus stopped? Why couldn't he come back to the woman later? And then his worst fears are realised. Poor man is taken aside and told not to bother Jesus anymore. It's too late. His wee girl has died. Did he let out a wail, do you think? We're not actually told. But Jesus turned to Jairus and told him not to be afraid. You know, reading these stories is a bit like being on an emotional roller coaster. It certainly is, and the ride continues. We'll come back to it in a wee minute, though. For now, let's just sing. Funerals in this country are dependent upon the availability of the crematorium and of the grave diggers. It can take anything from 10 days to two weeks to happen. In ancient Palestine, however, people were, and in fact they still are, buried within hours of their death. Which is why when Jairus and Jesus arrived at the family home, preparations were well underway for the little girl's funeral. And people were upset, they were crying, they were in a bit of a tiz. Now we shouldn't skip over those words because they remind us that the loss of someone we love hurts. 
and hurts a lot. Loss leaves us heartbroken, confused. It utterly rocks our world and leaves us feeling numb and lost and angry and every shade in between. To some, Jesus might have sounded a bit insensitive when he asked Jairus' family and friends, why all the crying? But when people are distraught, they don't always hear straight, do they? Jesus, however, wants them to be clear about what he is about to do. So he's blunt with them. The child isn't dead. She's only sleeping, he tells them. And they laugh at him. But Jesus goes to the little girl's room with her parents and he takes her hand and tells her to get up. And she does. And Jesus then says two things. The first is, don't tell anyone about this. And the second is, give her some food. Now, I'm not at all sure how likely it is that a whole houseful of upset people would not say anything about the miraculous thing that had just happened. But the bottom line is, Jesus wasn't doing what he did for the kudos or for the fame. It was to help the little girl. The two stories are very different, but in both, Jesus touches and restores the lives of those he helps. One, one finds healing through her own deliberate action, the other through the actions of others without her knowledge. This is Jesus opening her eyes to the wide range of people and circumstances and ways that he's able to help folk. The woman who had been suffering for 12 long years and the little girl whose life was on the edge after only 12 short years couldn't have been more different. The woman was lonely. She was bankrupt and an outcast because of her condition. The little girl was born into a caring family with both wealth and position. The older woman approached Jesus quietly surreptitiously even, and self-consciously, while Jairus very publicly throws himself down at Jesus' feet, pleading for his help. The woman finds physical healing the moment that she touches Jesus' cloak, but that healing then goes deeper and wider when, in front of everybody there, Jesus calls her, my daughter and commends her for her faith. She might have arrived that day in secrecy, but she left with her head held high, thanks to Jesus' words. I think, though, that it's important to say that when Jesus said to the woman, your faith has made you well, he wasn't meaning that if people ask for healing and nothing happens, then it's because they don't have enough faith. It is simply saying, that for this woman, her faith led to her being healed by Jesus. There are, however, plenty of other occasions when people are healed or fed and nothing at all is said about their faith. And if you think of the little girl who has given back her life, that happened not because she believed, but because Jesus took control. Both these stories, though, carry within them a challenge to us, a challenge to us to participate in that wide-ranging healing action of Jesus's. How? Well, for the little girl, it was her dad who took her needs to Jesus. While the woman came to Jesus, so we're told, because, and I'm going to quote here, because she had heard about him. We work with Jesus to bring healing to this world when, like Jairus, we bring people to him physically or in prayer. And every bit as importantly, we are participating in that healing action when we talk about what Jesus can do. The woman who came to Jesus because others had spoken of him, she came and those others couldn't possibly have known where their words were going to lead. But unwittingly, they played an important part 
a crucial part in the woman's healing. We too need to speak of Jesus and let those words go wherever they want to go. These two stories are beautiful, but let's us play our part in ensuring that such beautiful stories continue to happen. So bring folk to Jesus and talk of Jesus. Go for it. Your hands, Lord Jesus, stretch out to those who need to feel your touch. All those who are worried or in pain, all those who are frightened or upset, all those who feel forgotten and alone, all these different people you notice and care about and long to help. Bring peace and reassurance and bring comfort and strength to any who feel life is hard right now. And help us, we pray, to follow your example Help us to look for ways to share your loving concern for every human being, no matter where in the world they are. We ask you to hold, Lord Jesus, those who face violence every day. We think of those of all ages caught up in conflicts. We think of those who don't feel safe in their own homes. We think of those made to suffer because of the prejudices of others and of those counted worthless because they sleep rough or have an addiction. Prince of Peace, teach us to live at and in peace. Inspire in us the courage to refuse to let hate and abuse have the upper hand. Unclench fists, we pray. Stop the hurtful words and soften hard hearts. Help us all to do as you call us to. Help us to make more room for a love that oozes respect for all. We bring you, Lord Jesus, those who long to be healed. Come close to those living with a terminal condition and to those living daily with chronic ill and pain. Come close too to those grown older and frailer and who feel a burden even when they're not. And help any who are ill. We give you thanks for the skills of medical teams and so many others. Care for people, body, mind and spirit. And in the darker times when loss is real, bring comfort. We pray to those who mourn and bring to hope through faith in you. We pray for our nation as we approach a general election. We pray that differences of opinion will not divide. And we pray that in whatever the outcome, 
the people of this land may find the courage to welcome the stranger and to care for the most vulnerable and to pursue peace while caring for all God's hands have made. These things we ask in your name and we ask them for your sake. To you, Lord, and to the Creator and to the Spirit, be all glory forever. Amen.